Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Always 1776.com, a free site. Today is February the 9th, 2024. Let's talk money. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as financial advice. I'm simply sharing what I'm considering or what I'm pursuing. Right now, I understand that the stock market has looked bullish recently, right? We're hitting all-time highs in some measures. This comes even after Powell, the Fed chairman, said that there'd be no immediate rate cuts, right? What I want people to understand is that happy days are not here again. You should be cautious, right? People who look for historical trends, people who look at valuations, understand that this market is hopelessly overvalued. So let's talk actual numbers here. Off screen, I have another laptop. Uh, it has some data on it. I want people to think about the Buffett indicator, which is named after Warren Buffett, one of life's more successful investors. Understand Buffett believes that you can always tell when the stock market is overvalued by looking at the total market cap of the stock of the stock market divided by the GDP, the gross domestic product. Let me just read here from the screen here. This is from gurufocus.com, a website I like. According to the Buffett indicator, the stock market is significantly overvalued. Right, based on the historical ratio of total market cap over GDP, the Buffett indicator is currently at a 179.9% ratio. So it's likely to return 0.9% a year from this level of valuation, including dividends. Right, folks, this is preposterous. This is a hopelessly overvalued market. Don't fall in love with the present. Don't look at, you know, the S&P and hear talking heads on TV tell you that these are record levels. Folks, these are overvalued levels. Let me also make another point here. Another excellent indicator excellent indicator uh, that a recession is on the horizon is an inverted yield curve right now what I'm going to do here is actually talk about US Treasury yields understand typically in a healthy economy they have to pay you to borrow your money if you're lending the money for a longer period of time, let's say 20 or 30 years, they would normally pay you more per year since you're locking up your money in this loan to the government. That's what a bond is, right? They give you a bond, you give them your hard-earned capital, and then they pay interest on what you've given them. Right? So understand, in a healthy economy, you would get paid more for longer loans, right? The rate of interest you would receive on a 30-year would greatly exceed what you could receive on a six-month or one-year loan because they understand you are lending money for a long time. There's an opportunity cost. You're not going to be able to use that money for other things after you've lent it to the government. So we would expect a yield curve where you know, the 30-year yield would be much higher, much higher than the one-month yield or the one-year yield or the two-year yield, right? You would expect the 10-year yield to be much higher 
than the one month yield or the one year yield. Now let's read off the yield so you'll find out how inverted the yield curve is. The one month yield is 5.39%. These are current numbers. 5.39% for the one month. The one year yield is 4.876%. Would it shock you to know that the 10 year is below both of these numbers? While the one month is 5.39%, the 10 year is 4.187%. Believe it or not, folks, the 30 year is a full percentage point less than the one month yield. The one month you're getting 5.39%. The 30 year you're getting 4.376%. So folks, make no mistake, the US Treasury yield curve right now is inverted. The economy is unhealthy. You wanna know what's dominant? Markets are dominant, not Fed chairmen. Right? Don't be fooled by these intellectual looking people talking about interest rates and stuff like that. What you want to do is look at the actual rates. People are showing up at bond auctions, bidding on U.S. bonds. <laughs> I mean, understand, these are market prices. If you're going to trust anything, trust the market more than you do intellectuals. Right? Let me just say, too, you see all these swashbuckler types who have a lot of money, right? Who have done well in investments. Understand, many of those people are not members of Mensa. Right? Being a Mensa member is a different skill set. You can have a high IQ and not be a millionaire. Right? So why are we following people who have high IQs around as if they're going to make us millionaires when they can't make themselves millionaires? Let me also make another point too, and it'll sound a little bit hard, but understand you have a lot of people who are A students who now are competing with each other on college campuses and universities to try to get tenure. Right? Understand, they are employees of the university and they're competing with other employees for job promotions. How are they going to tell you how to be an entrepreneur? How to run your own company, right? Folks, if you're the owner, you're more than an employee. You're actually running the enterprise. For founders, they've thought of the enterprise, right? Understand, that's a different mindset. That's a different skill set than employees competing with each other for job promotions on college campuses. Right? You know what they say. The people who are A students become law professors. The people who are B students become judges. The people who are C students out of law school, well, they make money. Right? If you're one of these people who, you know, runs your own business, is actually interested in what the markets are saying, It's a mistake to rely on someone who hasn't been out in the field, who hasn't been in the river of the market, dealing with high and low tides. Right? The person getting that employee check from the school, the person who is trying to talk to donors, the people who endow professorships, hoping to get more money. They have different skill sets than the donors themselves who often have started businesses and who are able to endow professorships off of profits they made from the market. 
Let's talk about some other things that are collapsing around you. Right? Don't don't buy today's stock indexes, right? Which are overly impacted by the Magnificent Seven, right? A uh, very well financed Silicon Valley, uh, Google, Meta uh, companies, right? What you want to do is to go downtown in places like L.A., San Francisco, and you want to look around you and look at commercial real estate. Folks, first off, the downtown area in cities like San Francisco are relatively deserted compared to what they used to be. I need for you to think about what has become a misallocation of capital. Right, folks, the prices of the commercial real estate are tumbling. Understand, commercial real estate loans are different than residential mortgage loans. In commercial real estate, there are often interest-only loans. Right, every few years, the building has to refinance. They have to go to the market and they have to find out what the market rate of interest is. Now the problem with the way the system was gamed before is that people got extremely low interest rates when they finance their commercial real estate acquisition. So you're going to have many people now finding out that to refinance is going to cost a lot of money. And of course the world has changed. Many of the people who would have been commercial tenants in the past are online with fake backgrounds at home using the internet like I am right now in this video. Right? Understand, businesses want to be nimble. They want to tap into people who would rather work from home because the person might have children. The person might have parents they want to look after. The person might just like the idea of having a home office and not having to travel downtown, deal with Highway 10 in L.A. to get to downtown from the west side. Right, so just understand, demand for commercial real estate has dropped. It might be structural. Let's talk about other capital misallocations. How about the subway system to get to downtown, right? There was a time when the subways would be packed going to downtown. Now, of course, not so much. You wonder if the crowd's ever going to come back. I know many companies are saying, hey, look, you're going to be fired if you don't return to our downtown office a few days a week. Right. What I want people to understand is those ultimatums might not last in a free market. Because, of course, things like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, they've proven effective. You're going to have some people saying, hey, you know what? I don't want to go back to downtown. I'm an entrepreneur. I know there are many people like me. Maybe now's the time for me to build a business that's a virtual business, right? Doesn't use a lot of downtown real estate. Takes advantage of other workers who don't want to go downtown. Gives people flexibility. Takes advantage of this gig economy. Allows workers to not be employees, but rather to be independent contractors who could have other clients. Right? So the commercial real estate market, folks, it might have changed materially for at least the next five to ten years. You're going to have a lot of people who own commercial real estate reevaluating whether they want to keep the property, whether they want to refinance. Let's talk about professions that have been disintermediated by artificial intelligence. Folks, talk to your computer coding and programming friends. The world is different now thanks to AI. Many of them are losing their jobs. 
right? Just to understand, the convenience that you get from AI comes at a cost. There's a lot of creative destruction in the space. You're going to have a lot of people, I mean a lot of people, being displaced. Let me tell you, I used to work with paralegals. I would have people prepare first drafts for me. Now, thanks to the internet, I can subscribe to databases where I get briefs submitted to the court by other attorneys on the same subject matter that I need to write a brief on. Now, thanks to technology, modern day OCR, I can OCR documents, copy and paste arguments, put together very good briefs in a short period of time in a capital intensive but not labor intensive way. So I haven't had to use a paralegal recently. Right, let's just say it's a tougher world for paralegals these days because of tech. You're going to have a lot of people who face changed job conditions in situations like that. So let's talk about where that leaves us. Right, folks, because the stock market is overvalued, because even Powell is talking about how they're going to have to cut rates later, right, maybe in the middle of this year, because you understand you have record credit card debt, right? Young people are in debt, not just student loans, but credit card debt. So there's going to be a political demand in an election year for interest rate cuts. Now let's be economists here. You understand that interest rate cuts are going to favor the bond market. Right? You know, the minute you have a situation where you have a bond with a higher yield and suddenly they're cutting rates, that bond that you have with the higher yield jumps in value. Because you're getting a yield that when they cut rates, others can't get. Be mindful of that. Let's talk about other ideas. Now, as I've said here many times, I believe one of the great investment opportunities of our lifetime, of our lifetimes, is in the digital asset space, the cryptocurrency space. Now, I have a Substack page, so I'm not going to discuss cryptocurrency here. My Substack page is dewire70905.substack.com. That's D-W-Y-R-E 70905.substack.com. That's D -W -Y -E -R 70905 there is a free membership offer. There's also paid membership where we get into the weeds a little bit more. I hope you give it a look. Now, understand, cryptocurrency is what I believe in the most. So I'm going to mention some ideas here that I have my eye on, that I'm not invested in, because there'd be an opportunity cost. As good as the ideas I mention here are, I believe that my vision in crypto is better than the rate of return that these investment opportunities offer. But let's just say, just like I believe, that Bitcoin, for example, because it is a limited supply entity, is going to continue to jump in value. And just understand, BlackRock's Spot Bitcoin ETF is among BlackRock's most successful ETFs in terms of the amount of capital that it has attracted. And that just got approved a few weeks ago. Right? I need for people to look at gold. I need for people to consider silver. Right? I think both of them are hopelessly mispriced right now. 
right? I, in the past, have invested in First Majestic. I can't believe where that stock is right now. They're a silver miner, right? Let's just say gold and silver have many of the benefits that digital assets have. Right, limited supply. Politicians can't randomly decide to create more gold or create more silver. You have central banks buying up gold. You have Walmart now selling gold. So gold purchases are actually easier than they have been in the past. Right, from retailers you know you don't have to be a gold bug now to know where to buy your gold. Right? Let's also talk about AI. You heard me mention AI earlier. Just understand that lithography, just research this, is a major part of AI technology. It's a necessary part of artificial intelligence. You have a company, ASML, that has an excellent market position in lithography, and of course the stock's been on fire. Right now, you're not going to hear as much about ASML as you will these Magnificent Seven companies that are involved in the AI space that have great advertising budgets and departments, right? So, of course, you know, a Google, and I like Google, right? Let me just say I, I like Google a lot. I've owned Google many times in the past. I've even dealt with Google options in the past. Um... I believe Google is bullish. I like for people who are open to uh, leveraged ETFs on one stock. I like GGLL, right? That's a Direction uh, Google Bull 1.5. I have to get back to my day soon. 1.5 times the upside on Google. If you're a Google bull, consider GGLL. Understand Google is not only into AI, right? And check out Google Bard. You'll find out that they've upgraded Google Bard to Google Gemini, they're calling it now, right? And understand the capability now includes creating images on demand. So you can, in Google Gemini, say create an image of... You know, two people looking at a skyline in Paris. And it will do that, folks. Right? Understand the jobs, that's disintermediating. Right? I don't have to hire a graphic designer now. I can put together, you know, uh, pictures, paintings, uh, quickly by just talking to Google AI. Right, inputting sentences in Google AI, which will spit out the image in seconds. Let me point out too that Google, of course, is involved in cloud computing. Right, understand there are, believe it or not, cryptocurrency groups that are using cloud computing from companies like Google, from Amazon Web Services, etc. Uh, if you're a crypto person, just understand the overlap with the cloud computing services offered by Microsoft, which of course owns a big part of OpenAI, uh, Amazon, and Google, right? Finally, let me say this too. The AI space. Many AI companies are going to fail. But I believe ASML... Lithography is very well situated. I believe Supermicro Computers, SMCI, look up that um, symbol. And again, this is not investment advice. I'm just telling you what's on my radar right now. Supermicro Computers is, um, you know, servers, blade computing. That's a necessary part of artificial intelligence, right? I would encourage you to give that a look. Let me also say, too, in reference to Google, it's not just autonomous vehicles uh, technology, Waymo. Uh, it's not just cloud computing. Obviously, it's not just um, the nice pixel footprint that they have in the uh, smartphone market. Uh, that also dovetails into the photography market, right? Your 
Smartphone is what many people use to take photographs now, but I need for people to understand, and this applies to Amazon as well, the explosion in streaming services. Right? Google, of course, has the YouTube TV platform. What that means is this Sunday there's going to be a Super Bowl. I could be at home watching it on YouTube TV. I could be out someplace with friends, with my phone. And let's say my friends aren't heavily in football. I can take out my phone and I can pull up the game using YouTube TV. Right? Understand, too, many people don't realize that Chromecast is synced to YouTube TV to the point where you can just talk to your Chromecast and it will change your YouTube TV channel, right? And of course, YouTube itself um, syncs well with the rest of the Google ecosystem, right? Just food for thought. So um, to sum up, be careful out there. Don't fall in love with stock indexes, right? Understand it's not a stock market. It's really a market of stocks. And in general, right, many of the stocks are hopelessly overpriced. Understand, too, many of the stocks have been disintermediated by newer technology. Right. Um, you know, it's amazing when I was growing up that we had rabbit ear TVs and three big networks, ABC, NBC and CBS. Right. Fox came after my childhood. Right. Now, of course, you have everything splinter. You know, I can buy Max streaming service. Um, Amazon is interesting because Amazon has things like free TV. When I was a college student, saving every nickel, you know, a feast was uh, tuna. Many days you were eating beans and rice. You were on a meal plan. I'm sure many college students watching this video are nodding their heads, realizing that that's their life right now. The value menu at the uh, fast food drive through um, The idea of getting... Freebie, they call it, on Amazon, with a multitude of shows, would disintermediate any thought that I would have of actually getting a pay channel. Right? So just understand, streaming has changed the world. Um, not surprisingly, Google and Amazon are very well situated in that space. Right? So as we talk about the Magnificent Seven, I believe the Magnificent Seven's overvalued. I believe you're going to sooner or later start, you know, fading some of the Magnificent Seven. Um, I wonder, and I know people disagree with me on this, how many folks are going to pay thousands of dollars for Apple's new headset, right? I wonder how the iCar is going to be received. People here know I'm a skeptic on EVs in general electric vehicles in general. I believe there's going to be some bearishness for the Magnificent Seven. But I also have to say some of the Magnificent Seven are better positioned than others. Right? Google, Amazon, Microsoft, wow, they seem very well positioned to me. I understand Meta has been on fire as a stock. Right? What I need for people to understand is that there's now an acceptance of something there wasn't in Silicon Valley in the present day, and those are layoffs. You remember when Google said, do no harm? I'm telling you, Google culture, and I've been to some Google Christmas parties. Um, Google culture was, not that I work for Google, uh, Google culture was, you know, do no harm. The idea was that it was somewhat of a family environment. Right. You know, um, you weren't going to get laid off, laid off simply so the company could make their numbers. Right, folks, that's changed. Right. That has changed. You need to view working for 
a tech company uh, like making the major leagues or making the NFL. Understand, the NFL, according to Insider, stands for not for long. Right? For every Marcus Allen or Emmett Smith who played running back for over a decade, you have running backs who are lucky to be in the league three, four years. That's the way it is working for these companies. Right? Meta has benefited tremendously from having laid off a lot of people. Right? Don't fall in love with the current numbers when the current numbers have cost savings from a lot of layoffs. Just food for thought. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Understand the words behind me say high risk. I want that to be the attitude people have in considering what I'm saying here. Right? I'm saying that on a day like today where the stock market is up, where you pull up the AI stocks, um, that you have on your private list and everything's in the green and stuff like that. I'm just telling you that the stock market is very overvalued right now. Just do the math, look at the Buffett indicator, right, and figure it out. What we have right now is unsustainable. Everyone around you is smiling. They have record credit card debt. Right? You know, um, all I can say, too, with regard to housing is, you know, the folklore is, oh, everyone got great rates, so everyone's going to stay in their house. You and I know real life is going to start to take over. Right? People are getting laid off here, folks, in the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley. When you get laid off, that might change your housing situation. Whatever great rate you got on your house, you might have to sell that house out of necessity. Understand, too, it's only a great rate when your house retains value. Has anyone figured out that unemployment, which I know right now, according to current numbers, is below 4%? I would question that. Right? I would question that. But, folks, you can't have all these group layoffs without unemployment eventually rising. Right? Just figure it out. I believe the numbers here are a little bit funny. I believe we're equating um, gig economy jobs, uh, DoorDash delivery jobs, with uh, what used to be full-time employment jobs. Right? So, if you're online and you're listening to pundits, Please give Lacey Hunt a look. Please give Mike McGlone a look. Right? You have pundits online who are talking about real problems. Give Robert Kiyosaki a look. Right? Uh, give Danielle DiMartino Booth a look. Give John Rubino a look. Right? Don't fall for rosy indexes where people are ignoring. Buffett indicators that are over 170% and inverted yield curves. That's how I see it today. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video, including any investment ideas you want to share with the public that you're pursuing, right? Not investment advice, but your own investment ideas on how you're handling your own portfolio. Thanks for stopping by.